Do you want to learn how to effectively support your occupational health and safety management system? Then watch this series of ISO 45001 in 45 minutes to learn more. Welcome to this episode of ISO 45001 in 45 minutes entitled Clause 7, Support. So let's see how we can support our OSH management system to achieve the intended outcomes through these clauses. Clause 7.1 is entitled Resources. Here the organization needs to provide resources to establish, implement, maintain, and continually improve their business and their OSH management system. In thinking about resources, we need to consider current business needs and also future business needs. When we look at resources, we need to consider people, budget, equipment, services, and products. So services might include medical professionals that support the business. Products might include personal protective equipment that will all fall under the ambit of resources. Clause 7.2 is entitled competency. We can support our OSH management system by providing competent resources. So in order to achieve this particular clause, we need to identify the competence of workers who affect health and safety. We need to ensure that those workers are competent based on qualification, education, training, and experience. We need to take action to acquire and maintain competence. So once we've identified a possible deficiency in what a worker should have as a skill set, we can then put together a training plan to be able to acquire those particular skills. But we need to pay attention to the term there. We need to maintain competence. So if it's continual professional development or continual training, we need to make sure that competence is maintained. We need to evaluate the effectiveness of actions taken. So whether you use a, an external training provider who provides you with an accredited training certificate or you do a planned task observation as an example to assess the effectiveness of internal training, we also need to retain documented evidence of training and competence. Clause 7.3 is entitled Awareness. Here the standard says that we need to create awareness around particular requirements. So we need to create awareness for the OSH policy and OSH objectives. How workers contribute to the effectiveness of the OSH management system and also OSH performance. Also, what are the implications or the consequences of non-conformance to the law, to the standards, to the, the SOPs and work instructions that the uh, company may, may have in place? Incidents and outcomes of investigations, you need to create awareness for that in the business, whether it be through flash reports or monthly uh, feedback meetings or even in the safety committee meeting. We need to ensure that relevant OSH hazards and risks are communicated to people so that they are aware of them. And also we need to make sure that people are aware of their ability and their right to be able to exit, exit unsafe work areas. Clause 7.4 is entitled Communication. Here's where we focus on internal and external communication that supports the effectiveness of our OSH management system. So we need to consider what needs to be communicated, when it needs to be communicated, how it needs to be communicated, and with whom. Now, when we consider those factors, we need to think of both internal and external communication. So when we're thinking of internal communication, we need to look at the levels and the functions within the business. We need to consider communication to contractors and visitors and also externally to interested parties. So what about the regulator? What if an accident takes place that needs to be reported? What form is filled in? How is it communicated to who, when, and who are the participants? So that's just a, a slight overview of some of the things that you need to look at in terms of communication. When we're communicating, we need to consider gender, ethnicity, language, and the ability of the person who is receiving the communication. We need to take into account legal requirements and also the business requirements. We also need to retain evidence where required of internal and external communication. Now we move across into clause 7.5, which is entitled documented information. So here is all the documents, policies, procedures, supporting documents, files, records, etc. that you have within your management system and how we utilize those to support the management system to achieve its intended outcomes. So clause 7.5 speaks about that you have to have documents that are required by the standard. So in several cases, when you read through the ISO 45001 standard, it will make reference to the fact that you need to retain documented evidence. So those are some of the things required by the standard. You also need docs required by the organization. So those will be driven by your organizational requirements. 
So in your process, if you have one for documented information, you will have a process that will speak to creating and updating documents, how documents are identified, the format, the language, the medium, is it paper or electronic, and also the review and approval of documents. You need to consider whether you're going to use software, um, how you're going to drive that document control process. Also, when we look at the control of documented information, documents need to be available when needed. They need to be protected. What happens if they're confidential? We need to ensure that documents are legible for the prescribed period that we are going to retain them. So if we're talking about medical records or occupational hygiene assessments, we know that they can be retained for between 30 and 40 years, depending on what the, the legal uh, proviso is. We also need to control distribution, storage, uh, we need to control changes of documents, and we need to speak to the retention and disposition of documented information. We also need to ensure that we control those very important documents of external origin, such as safety data sheets and machinery equipment manuals. Those are such important documents because they are essential information on hazards and controls specific to substances or equipment that you could have on site. So let's take a broader view of Clause 7. If we were going to execute Clause 7 into an organization, we could have several different processes that we develop. I personally would develop a, a process for resources that would uh, speak to the organogram and how we're going to plan resources. So if we're going to start a project, how we plan to, to onboard new employees or workers per project, what about equipment and infrastructure and personal protective equipment and calibration services and medical services and the services of an occupational hygienist? Those are all resources that we need to consider in our planning process. So we need to provide resources for uh, current business needs and also consider future business needs. So com competency, I would have a process for that that would identify all the skills requirements and competency for the various different workers. Um, we'd also have evidence of skills and training. Uh, some of the outcomes to that competency process, we could have a training needs analysis, we could have a training plan, we could have training certificates and qualifications, uh, we also could have planned task observations where people have done an observation of somebody who's been trained to assess the effectiveness of actions taken. So I could have a process for awareness. Generally, a lot of organizations will amalgamate Clause 7.2 and 7.3 into one procedure for competency and awareness, but you can have them separate if you want. And again, a lot of those OSH awareness issues can be incorporated into an induction, make people aware of the policy and the objectives and uh, positive and negative impacts of either conforming or not conforming to the management system. Still flash reports or incident investigations and also the risk registers or SOPs of work instructions are good ways of making people aware of either hazards or the outcomes of investigations. I also have a procedure for communication. You can have it separate. I like to amalgamate communication, consultation, and participation into one. And I've got a communications matrix that speaks to the what, when, how, when, who, whether there's consultation and participation with regards to internal and external communication. 7.5 documented information is where I will look at the control of my documents. I'll write a process there for the creation of documents, how they're approved and published into the business, how we control obsolete copies, how we control changes. All of that will be written into that process. So I could also have a hard copy distribution document. If we print policies and they're scattered all the way around the organization, I need to know where they are. I would use a hard copy distribution register for that. I could also have a records register um, that would show me what records need to be maintained by who, um, how long they're kept for, how they're protected, etc. And then I could also have a register for the control of documents of external origin, which are those very important documents. So there we have an overview of Clause 7, which is entitled Support. So whether it's Clause 7.1 on resources, competency, awareness, communication, or documented information, all of those clauses are directed at supporting your OSH management system to achieve its intended outcomes. We hope that you enjoyed this episode. Hit the subscribe button if you'd like to receive more information from us on compliance and ISO management systems.